Then a woman said, Speak to us of joy and sorrow. And he answered, Your joy is your sorrow unmasked. And the selfsame well from which your laughter rises was oftentimes filled with your tears. And how else can it be? The deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned in the potter's oven? And is not the lute that soothes your spirit the very wood that was hollowed with knives? When you are joyous, look deep into your heart, and you shall find it is only that which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy. When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. Some of you say, joy is greater than sorrow, and others say, nay, sorrow is the greater. But I say unto you, they are inseparable. Together they come, and when one sits alone with you at your board, remember that the other is asleep upon your bed. Verily, you are suspended like scales between your sorrow and your joy. Only when you are empty are you at standstill and balanced. When the treasure keeper lifts you to weigh his gold and his silver, needs must your joy or your sorrow rise or fall. Then a mason came forth and said, Speak to us of houses. And he answered and said, Build of your imaginings a bower in the wilderness, ere you build a house within the city walls. For even as you have homecomings in your twilight, so has the wanderer in you the ever distant and alone. Your house is your larger body. It grows in the sun and sleeps in the stillness of the night, and it is not dreamless. Does not your house dream, and dreaming leave the city for grove or hilltop? Would that I could gather your houses into my hand, and like a sower scatter them in forest and meadow. Would that the valleys were your streets, and the green paths your alleys, that you might seek one another through vineyards, and come with the fragrance of the earth in your garments. But these things are not yet to be. In their fear, your forefathers gathered you too near together, and that fear shall endure a little longer. A little longer shall your city walls separate your hearths from your fields. And tell me, people of Orphalese, what have you in these houses, and what is it you guard with fastened doors? Have you peace, the quiet urge that reveals your power? Have you remembrances, the glimmering arches that span the summits of the mind? Have you beauty, that leads the heart from things fashioned of wood and stone to the holy mountain? Tell me, have you these in your houses? Or have you only comfort? and the lust for comfort, that stealthy thing that enters the house a guest, and then becomes a host, and then a master. Aye, and it becomes a tamer, and with hook and scourge makes puppets of your larger desires. Though its hands are silken, its heart is of iron. It lulls you to sleep, only to stand by your bed and jeer at the dignity of the flesh. It makes mock of your sound senses, and lays them in thistle-down like fragile vessels. Verily, the lust for comfort murders the passion of the soul, 
and then walks grinning in the funeral. But you, children of space, you restless in rest, you shall not be trapped nor tamed. Your house shall be not an anchor, but a mast. It shall not be a glistening film that covers a wound, but an eyelid that guards the eye. You shall not fold your wings so that you may pass through doors, nor bend your heads that they strike not against the ceiling, nor fear to breathe lest walls should crack and fall down. You shall not dwell in tombs made by the dead for the living, and though of magnificence and splendor, your house shall not hold your secret, nor shelter your longing. For that which is boundless in you abides in the mansion of the sky, whose door is the morning mist, and whose windows are the songs and the silences of night. <laughs>